Welcome everybody to AMD Tusion. Today, we'll explore the tiny building blocks of life and uncover their remarkable subcellular structures. By the end of this video, you'll be able to identify and understand the key components of both animal and plant cells, as well as the unique features of bacterial cells. So let's get started. Let's start by understanding what cells are. So imagine for a moment that you're looking at a human being under a microscope. What do you see? Trillions of cells working together to make a complex organism. Cells are the fundamental units of life. They're like the Lego bricks of living creatures, and they have a remarkable ability to replicate independently. In the case of multicellular organisms like humans, cells divide to help with growth and replacing dead cells. But in single celled organisms like bacteria, every division creates a whole new organism. All right, let's dive deeper into cell structure. We'll start by comparing animal and plant cells side by side to uncover their similarities and differences. Both animal and plant cells are surrounded by a protective cell membrane, which acts as a gatekeeper, controlling what enters and exits the cell. Inside, you'll find a nucleus, the control center of the cell, housing the genetic material, or also known as the DNA. Both cell types are filled with cytoplasm, a jelly-like substance where chemical reactions take place. Think of it like water filling a water balloon. This cytoplasm provides the stage for all cellular action. They also share mitochondria, which are like tiny powerhouses, supplying the cells with the energy they need. These mitochondria break down glucose through aerobic respiration, releasing energy for the cell's activities. And let's not forget about ribosomes. They're the workhorses where proteins are synthesized. Now let's talk about plant cells. They come with a few extra components. First up, the rigid cell wall. This is composed of cellulose, which gives the plant their support and structure. Without it, they might burst from too much water. Plant cells also contain a permanent vacuole. This is a handy sac filled with cell sap, a mixture of sugars, salt and water that the cell uses as needed. And last but not least, chloroplasts, the green machines where photosynthesis happens. Chlorophyll, the green pigment inside chloroplasts, absorbs sunlight for the magic process of turning sunlight into glucose. And that there is the reason why plant leaves are actually green. Now let's venture into the world of bacterial cells. These are prokaryotes and they are also unicellular, meaning they consist of a single cell. Now, they do have some common features with eukaryotic cells, such as a cell membrane, cell wall, ribosomes, and cytoplasm. However, bacterial cells don't have mitochondria or chloroplasts. Instead, their DNA is a single circular strand that floats freely in the cytoplasm. This circular chromosome contains all the essential genes for survival and reproduction. Some bacteria also contain plasmids, and these are small rings of DNA which contain bonus genes. In addition to this, some bacteria contain a structure called flagella, and this is a thread-like structure that rotates in order to propel the bacterium around and allowing it to move. Remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell because we've got an exciting lineup of videos on the horizon that we don't want any of you to miss out on. If you're eager to put your newfound knowledge to the test with some exam questions, or would like to book in a free taster lesson with one of our tutors, then please head over to the video description. Thanks for being part of the AMD Tuition community, and until next time, keep exploring, learning, working hard, and keep that scientific curiosity alive. I'll catch you on the next video. Also, comment below any questions that you may have, and I'll try and get back to as many of you as possible.